Good evening. It's your show time. Time to relax and enjoy another good yarn. The story I have for you tonight is based on the mummies. Now, ah, here it is. The mummy's foot. It's the story of a storyteller. Now, among storytellers or writers, there's a tendency towards excessive preoccupation. To put it plainer, wool gathering, daydreaming, absent-mindedness. Now, the young man in the mummy's foot is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. To all nominal appearances, he lived in New York City. The same New York City that we all know, even if we've never been there. surrounded by all the trappings of this great metropolis and by a sizable number of people who were affected by these trappings, our young man was quite divorced from them. For Peter Renard was a playwright, a very intense young playwright. Because the play he was writing was about ancient Egypt, he'd started out picking up a few relics to surround himself with a proper mood. And he'd wound up by transforming a room in a Manhattan brownstone into something that looked more like the tomb of a pharaoh. It was this excessive preoccupation of Peter's that led to the difficulty with Sylvia Holmby. Sylvia had the room next door. She worked in an office in Wall Street. And there were quite a few slick, successful young businessmen who were only waiting for one small sign of interest from her. But Sylvia was in love with Peter, and that was that. Well, almost that. The trouble was, the only world that existed for Peter was the world about which he was writing. Stop! Don't touch it! You'll ruin yourself. People will turn away from you. I've got the whole scene now. Believe me, Kiyos. Here it is. You're on your throne. Your counsel beside you. The whole populace awaits your decision. The trumpets blow. Da -da 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 -da! No, 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 I forgot. He'd use a ram's horn. Now, you step outside to face the angry, muttering crowd. Mutter, 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 mutter. No, they're not angry yet. They're just annoyed. But they can become dangerous, so you step inside again. Your prime minister urges you to make the popular choice. You hesitate. Torn between two strong emotions. You stand there. About ready to make a decision. No, you won't make a decision here. You decide to withdraw to your private chamber. You summon before you the only person in the world who you really trust. Your beautiful daughter, the Princess Hermantis. The princess enters. The princess pleads with you. But you're stern. She pleads some more. You're just about to unbend, just a little, when your prime minister comes in with fresh sunflower seeds. Now let's make it grapes. Well, we'll check research on it. He argues. You are swayed. You become stern again. Tears roll down the princess's cheek. She gives up. She turns. And as she goes, she says... Hi, Pop. How's about a bite of supper? Hello, honey. How long have you been standing there? Oh, just long enough to get the drift of the scene. Not bad. I did not, by the way. I guess I was into it pretty deep. Any deeper and you'd have been up to your neck in bull rushes. 
How are you doing with the princess? Oh, she really came alive in the scene I wrote today. I could feel her right here in the room with me. More beautiful than Helen of Troy, more glamorous than Cleopatra. Why, even now, I can, I can almost smell her Egyptian perfume. That's Chanel number five, and it's on me, not the princess. What's the matter? Are you jealous? Not me. I'm here. She isn't. Now make yourself useful. Get us some milk. Okay, Pharaoh. Supper's on. Yeah. The fire should have had it this good. You know, you've been a big help, Shelby. Have I? Well, you can give me one of those lines on your title page. Thanks to Miss Sylvia Holmby. Without whose help, this play would have been finished two months quicker. No, I mean it. All the time you've saved me, shopping, fixing suppers, and... You know, after we're married and the play's on the board... Peter! What did you say? Uh, I said after we're married and the, and the play's on the boards, I'm going to take you on the best honeymoon you've ever been on. Well, if that isn't the darndest proposal ever. Proposal? You mean I hadn't told you before? Well, I certainly meant to. <laughs> after all, there's never every girl's sandwiches I eat. Oh, Peter. Peter, I've been waiting and waiting. I'm very happy. So am I. I guess if that was a proposal, a little celebration's in order. Tomorrow night we eat out, Antonio. <laughs> You're spoiling me already. You can have anything you want, as long as it's the 85 cent spaghetti special. Do you think Antonio will mind if I bring along a sandwich? Okay, so you can have a hamburger steak. For that, sir, I'll let you get back to work on your play. This I'll take with me. Good night, Peter. Good night, honey. You know, I, I feel a great theme coming on tonight. The scene between father and daughter. Hamantis prodding the Pharaoh's conscience, speaking up for truth and justice. Cheops, tortured by guilt, seeking to escape. So Peter, now an engaged man, went back to work. Back 3,000 years into ancient Egypt. Unfortunately, when Peter went back 3,000 years, it sometimes took him a few days to return to the present. Hello, honey. Hi. I just had the luckiest break. Imagine. Peter, where have you been? Well, I had to do some research, so I went to the library, and, and on my way back, there was Did an antique... Did you forget what night this was? No. Thursday. Oh, I hope you didn't bother to make any sandwiches, because I'm not hungry. Oh. You're not hungry. Uh, no, I, I, I had a hot dog at a little stand. It was a lucky thing I did, too, because right next to the stand was the antique shop, and... Hey, you're all dressed up. Are you going someplace? Yes. I had a date to celebrate my engagement tonight. With you. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, honey. Please forgive me. Oh, Peter, I forgive you, but don't... No buts. No buts. I know you'll understand why I forgot when you see what I found at the antique store. This is almost too good to be true. There. What is it? What is it? It's a mummy's foot. Why, it, it, it's a, an Egyptian girl's foot, the real thing. What kind of a joke is that? No, it, it's almost 3,000 years old, Sylvia. A genuine relic of the fourth Egyptian dynasty. So that's where you were. Mooning over that relic when we were supposed to be celebrating our engagement. Well, you don't understand, Sylvia. You see, there's a legend that some vandals raided the Princess Amantha's tomb, and among other things, they were supposed to have stolen her foot. Now do you see? <laughs> that may be the foot of the princess herself. Oh, Peter. Peter, I'm afraid we... I'm afraid we've made a terrible mistake. Oh, be reasonable, Sylvia. I, I explained why. Oh, I know, I know. There'll always be explanations. And it'll always happen again. Maybe I'm just too practical a soul. But I can't see competing for your attention with your plays and all the characters in them. Don't be upset, honey. 
You said you weren't jealous of Hermantus, remember? Of course I'm not. Oh, yes, you are, and it's all my fault. Imagine telling your fiancé about another girl's beauty and glamour. As a matter of fact, Peter, the princess may have been glamorous, but she wasn't a very admirable person. What? You didn't tell me that she had six husbands. <laughs> How'd you know that? Oh, I'd been reading all about her while you were gone. Six husbands. And as she got tired of each, she had them sealed into urns and dropped into the Nile. Oh, that, that's just a rumor. Oh, so that's only a rumor, but that story about that fake relic you're perfectly willing to believe. I didn't say I believed it. I you said... spent two hours down at the antique shop gabbing about it. Oh, certainly it's got a fascinating possibility. So has the murder of six husbands. She did not murder six husbands. Oh. I suppose they just jumped into urns and dropped themselves into the Nile. How can you be so unreasonable? I'm unreasonable. Yes, you read a few pages in one book and then you make a judgment. I've read a half a dozen books and I haven't decided yet. But at least I don't jump to accept ugly rumors about people. Let me tell you something. Some other time, perhaps. Right now, I find I'm just not interested. Good night, Mr. Renard. Every beautiful woman in history has been vilified, Princess. This time, we're going to set the record straight. again with palm oil and, and your nails polished with a hippopotamus tooth. You're, you're really the Princess Hamantis? But do I look like an imposter? No, you, you look exactly as I described. Just as you should. Well, I, I, I'm really a bit disheveled at the moment, but, but no, first my foot. I've come prepared, sir. Here are a hundred pieces of silver. Oh, no, Princess. Sir, you must let me buy it back from you. I want you to have it. But you don't have to pay me. After all, the, the foot is, is far more yours than mine. How, how sweetly you put it. Then you shall have something to replace the foot. Yes, you shall. And now, would you hold me a moment? Oh, my dear foot, we've been apart so long. See? As good as new. Oh, thank you, Peter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, there's nothing, nothing at all. I'm glad to do it for your Highness. I like you, Peter. I do. You may call me just Hermontus. Okay, Hermantus. Say, that's nice perfume you're wearing. You like it? It's made especially for me. Called Nile Number 5. How strange you are. Am I to believe you're avoiding the princess, Hermantus? Oh, oh, no. It, it, it's just that Sylvia might if she heard your voice. No, what I mean to say is that the landlady doesn't allow visitors after 10. Oh, well, no matter. We should be leaving anyway. We? Well, of course, Peter. You must appear before my father and be properly rewarded. Oh, that's very nice. But I don't think I can make it tonight. But the great god Osiris, I command you to accompany me. 
people forgive me, Peter? I didn't mean that. But I do want you to come to the pyramids with me. To the pyramids? You will come, won't you? Won't you? It was the Princess Hermotes herself. There she stood, alive in his room. And just as beautiful as he described in his play. For any young man, a very tense and interesting situation. Right now, it's time for a lucky, I think. There stood Peter, face to face with a girl that he knew to be at least 2,300 years old. But who certainly didn't look her age. It made him a little nervous. Wouldn't it you? Dom and my father's body servant. The princess wishes? What service? Ask the pharaoh if he will see his daughter in his private chamber. Come and make yourself comfortable. <clears throat> Why, uh, father will be very pleased to see the royal foot back in the family. He'll grant you anything you want. Well, uh, that's very nice of him, but uh, I can't think of a thing. Perhaps it seems a little out of your reach, but just ask for it. Well, I'm really not deserving of it, but... Yes? I'm probably asking for the impossible, but... Oh, ask it, Peter, ask it. Do you think your father would let me have a copy of the court records? Well, I, I'd understand if he couldn't, but you see, I'm writing a drama about you and your father. <coughs> Arise. Tee up the pharaoh, come. Oh, you're impossible. Well, almost. Grapes okay. Do you desire a private audience, my daughter? Look, Father. It's very nice. Your foot. How did you find it? It was Peter, Father. He found it for me. Very admirable, young man. Admirable. The Pharaoh was highly pleased. He would like to know what you desire as a reward. Well, um... What Peter would like, Father, for returning my foot is my hand. Oh, he would, would he? Oh, no, no, Your Honor. Uh, Your Majesty, I mean, the princess... Uh... No need to get nervous, young man. No need at all. It's a perfectly reasonable request. And you shall have it. You shall be the seventh husband of the Princess Hermantis. Oh, Peter, isn't it exciting? Amen, summon the court at once. No, wait! I can't do it, Hermantus. It's impossible, Pharaoh. I, I'm kind of engaged to Sylvia. Sylvia? Who is Sylvia? What is she? Sylvia. Sounds an Egyptian. Oh, what difference does it make? Father, don't you understand? He's refusing me. I'm in, into the urn with him. No, no. Oh, Pharaoh, let me speak. Oh, uh, wait a moment, uh, Armin. Perhaps he wishes to reconsider. Hmm? Your Majesty, I'm truly honored by the chance to marry the princess. Well, no. <laughs> That's better. But uh, I think if you think it over carefully, you'll realize that it's just not right. Father, we're just wasting time. You're being stingy about an old urn. It's not an old urn. It's a new urn. And please, what is it you would like to say? Oh, Venerable Pharaoh, may I ask your age? My age? Well, let's see. I'm, uh... Raised with uh, the Uh, I'm in my abacus. Thank you. 
Six and five. Eleven. Eleven. Same as five and six, isn't it? <laughs> now, let's see, that's two thousand three hundred and fifty-one. Forget my bonus Forgive my boldness, Your Majesty, but may I ask you to clasp my hand? It's a custom of my country. What is this nonsense? Why, he's making a mockery of the court of Cheops. Just as I thought, O'Farrell. Your grip is as strong as a bar of steel. <laughs> you should have felt it when I was only 2,300. <laughs> oh, Father. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, what is it you want to say? Uh, Consider, O'Farrell. You are 2,351 years old and as strong as ever. The princess is over 2,300 and as beautiful as ever. I'm only 2,298. I'm just 27 years old. Consider, O'Farrell, my people have lost the art of preserving themselves. In a mere 70 years, I'll, I'll just be a handful of dust. Is that the kind of a husband that befits the daughter of the great Cheops? Hmm, only 27. Seems a little disproportionate. And if you live only another 70 years, it hardly seems worthwhile. What do you think, Amanthus? For the great god Osiris, I think all these are just excuses to... Is my old father going to sit there and watch his daughter? Oh! and knocking. I didn't know whether you were lost in your play or just didn't want to see me. Didn't want to see you? Oh, Peter, I knew that couldn't be true. I'm so sorry about our quarrel. Fighting over a girl that doesn't even exist. She doesn't? Now, don't start teasing me. I feel foolish enough already. You will forget what I said, won't you? Oh, sure, sure, Sylvia. And if it's what you want, we can even go to the pyramids on our honeymoon. Oh, no, not there. Peter, what's the matter? You seem sort of in a daze. I just had the craziest dream. By the great god Osiris. What did you say? Nothing. Nothing at all. Sylvia. Yes, Peter? They marry you in Maryland immediately. Can we get down there in a couple of hours? Oh, yes, Peter. <laughs> Never worked another night on that play. No, sir. Not by the great god Osiris. After he and Sylvia were married, he switched to a modern domestic comedy. All about a young wife's problems as a husband. A rather forgetful, dreamy sort of a fellow. It was a great success, too. Ran a year and a half on Broadway. 